Okay, so I just figured I'd make a little quick video for you guys on how to replace the carburetor on this Power Horse generator. Now this is a kind of smaller, simpler generator. I got this at Northern Tool. And I first bought it, started it, ran it, everything worked great. And then I let it sit for over a year. Didn't turn off the fuel, didn't put stable in it, and lo and behold, it gummed up the carburetor. Now, a couple months ago, after sitting for another year without working, I finally got around to tearing it apart and cleaning the carburetor which I cleaned everything out on the carburetor and I got it to where it would start and run on a choke but when I turned the choke off it would kill the engine so I've either got an air leak so it gets too much air or I've got a fuel restriction so it's not getting enough fuel um, either one it's obviously a carburetor related issue now you can't <laughs> maybe you can find this carburetor somewhere off the shelf I don't know but what you can do is just call Northern Tool directly um, or Power Horse. I think it's routed through Northern Tool, but call Power Horse directly and you can just get a whole new carburetor. It's 20 bucks. With shipping, did it to my door, it was $29 for a whole new carburetor. Uh, this is the whole carburetor. It's got your extra bushings, bolts, seals, everything. I mean, you, you can't pass on that. You know, I always tell you guys that one of my personal rule of thumbs is, you know, if I can, if I can do it for $20 an hour or I can save myself $20 by doing it, I'll do it. And I spent about two hours screwing with this thing in the past trying to clean the carburetor when I should have just bought a new one online and bolted on. So that's what I'm going to do today is just bolt this new one on. Okay, so step one, we need to uh, take off our fuel tank. Now, I don't have a whole lot of fuel in the tank because I drained it prior. Um, but it's got four bolts on top, and then you've got to disconnect your fuel line underneath the here and disconnect this fuel line, the return line up top, and then you can lift the whole tank up and set it aside. Actually, actually disconnect this one here. This is a, an air vent line that comes in the back of your air filter. So we'll disconnect it in the back. And these little clamps are actually, you know, a pair of pliers helps, but I got that one with my bare hands. This one. Yeah, I got that one too. Okay. So let me see. I think the fuel's turned off, but we're about to find out. Fuel's off, okay. So take those loose, feed this up through here. This has got a little guide hole that goes through your rail there to prevent vibration. And then you can pick the whole tank up, set it back out of your way. Make sure you hang on to your clips here. So put it back on the hose so you don't lose it. All right, now that shows us our air filter and our carburetor's right behind it. I think y'all can see that. See what I'm pointing at here? Yeah, okay, so here's our air filter our handles out of the way but you're gonna take the screw off at the bottom of the air filter take off your air filter cover your air filter cover makes a nice little tray to put your nuts and bolts in by the way take out your air filter actual filter then you've got this little metal screen that supports your air filter try to remember which way that goes in because it took me forever to figure it out last time <laughs> for some reason I couldn't remember which way it went in there and then you've got two screws right here in the back we're gonna loosen these two nuts take off our air breather cover and we'll be able to pull off our whole carburetor right then. Your linkages up top, they're spring loaded. You don't want to stretch these springs and you don't want to bend your wires. So what I'm going to do is loosen the carburetor and then as I work it off and I'm able to manipulate it, I'll be able to disconnect these <coughs> linkages. So let me get some stuff loosened up here. I've already got these loosened. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the nuts off. Again, set them in your air filter cap so you don't lose them. I thought I had them loosened. That one there's not quite broke. Okay, thread that off there. You've got another vacuum line on the back of your air filter. It goes back over to your uh, valve cup, valve body cover. Just pull it loose. It's nothing, doesn't even have a clamp on it. And then this air filter cover, the whole thing should, oh, we got one more nut in the back here. I forgot about, of course it's not a nine millimeter. And Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. It is a 8 millimeter. The nuts on the fuel tank, by the way, were an 8 millimeter as well. And I just used my old impact wrench to zip them out real quick. I can't fit it underneath here. So, try to get this one pulled out. And there we go. Now, 
our air body comes off. You've got a little rubber grommet over here for that fuel line. Don't worry about it. Put your screw back in the back of your air filter cover or air filter case just so you don't lose it. Set it to the side. Okay, so here's our carburetor. See the nuts are already off of it, <laughs> those original nuts. So we can just take the whole carburetor, give it a little wiggle here. And as it slides out, you've got a gasket in the front. Now something important to do when you're talking about small, small stuff like this, lay everything out in the order that you took it off. So I'm going to come over here on the concrete, you guys can't see it. Lay that down as the outside valve, or outside gasket. Slide the carburetor forward and as I do, I've got two throttle linkages that I have to disconnect. Now this, um, your main, I believe it's your governor, it kind of rotates as you pull the carburetor out, which actually lets you slip that linkage right out. And then your other linkage is spring loaded. It's a very fine wire, so do not crimp it, but you can, you can stretch the spring for just a second to disconnect it. So we'll disconnect those, turn them over here out of our way, and the carburetor slides right off. So there's your carburetor. It's got a couple of linkages that are stuck onto it already. Set that to the side, and you've got another gasket right here. Set that off. You've got this other spacer behind it. And I'm taking all this off because this is all part of the kit. Set that to the side. It's got another gasket on the back of it. And your studs, they send new studs in the kit. And so I'm going to go ahead and replace them. You know, it just makes sense. If you've got everything given to you in a kit, you might as well use it. So get on those, not on the threads, although it doesn't matter for this one since we're going to toss them anyway. But get onto these. And try to get them threaded out. They don't want to come out real easy. So we got the old studs out. And again, I hope, oh, y'all can see that perfectly. That's nice. Got the old studs out and they are uh, unique. So one end is a little bit, this has longer threads on this end than the opposite end. And this also has a flare on it to keep you from threading it in too far. So now let's get into our bag of goodies here. See what we've got. New carburetor. Set that somewhere so it stays nice and clean. We've got this new spacer spool that we took out, or spacer body. I think they call it a insulator carburetor. We've got our nuts and bolts and gaskets here. And we've got a new throttle linkage handle. And that's it. Bag's empty. Okay, so we're just going to go back in, reverse order of how we came out. Open up our little baggie here and get our new studs out. And I'm going to put the this one in first because it was harder to, can't really get to it with the pliers if the other one's in the way. All right, so that was that. Now, remember, I said put everything in reverse order of how it came out so when you put it back in. So the first thing out was our, or the, the last thing out was our insulator carburetor and the gasket that goes on the back of it. So we get our new gasket and our new insulator carburetor. Look at how they go. The gasket has this square shape, sits on like this. And I'm gonna slide the gasket on first, push it back into place, and slide the insulator carburetor, or the insulator in place. Just make sure it's all the way on back. Yes, that's on. It's nice and loose. Next thing that came off was our old seal here. And actually, <laughs> I don't remember what direction it was facing, but I remember that my carburetor sat like this so I can look at the gasket in the back. And that looks good. And that does not. So you can just line it up on the back of the carburetor to figure out which way it has to go on. Slide that on there. And then we had our actual carburetor go on. Now again, they sent this new handle. That's part of your, this is your choke handle. And it just, I think it just sets in there. Yep, look at that, you try to pull it out, you can't, but then it falls out and surprises you. All right. So there's a stud here, 
handle sits on top of that stud, and this little pin goes inside this slot. So just set it together, work it back and forth. You can see my see my choke opening and closing there. So that's good. That's in. So we go to slide our carburetor back on. Remember your throttle linkages that you had. So we're going to do that spring one first. That's handy. And then set our carburetor on. And as we get it lined up, hook our other linkage in. And just slide her on back. Okay, that's all in. Last is our replacement gasket on the front. Slide it on, that doesn't look right. Slide it on this way. That looks right. Okay, that gasket's on. And now we're back to our uh, air body. So, carburetor body. Take your screw out of the back so that it will actually go back on. Set it on over top of that. Start your screw in. Now we're not going to necessarily torque anything down just yet because we've got to hook fuel lines back up. My old, they don't send new fuel lines, so take your old fuel line off your old carburetor. <clears throat> it's clean. There's a rubber cap on the new carburetor. Pull it off. It's on there just to protect your fuel line. And then slide your Put your clip back on there. Oh man, it's not wanting to cooperate. At least, it's not wanting me to do it without tools. <laughs> what a shame, I actually have to grab a pair of pliers, you know. Man, shouldn't have to deal with that. Whoopsie, drop my gasket. Gasket. I'm getting myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Shouldn't have had the air body on yet. Okay. Gasket back on. I got it upside down. Gasket back on properly. There we go. And got body on. Put one of the nuts on just to secure it. The other nut on. Find back your tools that you most likely misplaced, as we always do. I feel like I feel like something's different. Maybe not. Probably just me psyching myself out. But I feel like. Something's missing or something. I feel like something's sticking out further than it used to be, but I don't have any spare parts. And I said this was going to be a quick video, but I guess it's not. But it's still a point remaining. A lot of these small engines, especially from Northern Tool and Harbor Freight, people call them you know, little junk engines, throwaway engines, because they say, well, I can't go buy replacement parts for them off the shelf. But you can call the manufacturer and get replacement parts. That nuts in. Don't forget your nut in the back of the air body. We'll go ahead and torque it down. That's torqued down. These torque down there. And no spare parts. And remember which way this goes in there. It's not really intuitive, I don't believe, but I think I can get it here. <laughs> got it on the first try. I'm not kidding you. When I took all this apart months ago, it took me 30 minutes to rotate and flip and rotate that thing around trying to figure it out. Put your air breather back in. Cover back on. It just snaps on the top. Level it up. Thread on the bottom. And now we've got a few air lines and stuff left to hook back up. Remember we've got our vacuum line back here that goes to your valve cover. Hook it back up, and 
wobble your fuel tank back into place. Drop all your nuts and bolts. You want everything, you know, started in and kind of leveled up before you go to torquing everything down. That's standard mechanical rule. All right. Put the fuel line back up. Do a quick check, make sure I've got fuel. Yep. Just open the valve. Fuel's running through there. I know my fuel line's clean. I know my valve is clean. So I should have fuel to the carburetor. Get that ignorant handle up out of my way. Put that clip on. I can actually go ahead and turn my fuel on now. And then your last air line back here. It's your vent line or return line to, I guess it's the, I guess it's the vacuum line to the fuel tank. I don't, it's not a return line. Fight that bad boy back down through that rail just so everything's put together right. Put your clip back on it. Hook it back into the back of your air breather. Clamp back in place. And last but not least, grab your handy dandy impact wrench because that's funner to use than a wrench. down. Fuel tank's got rubber grommets on it for vibration, so it should work. All right. So, let's do some live action here, and let's just see. I can't promise y'all it's going to start, but if I did everything the way I was supposed to, it should. So we'll give her a couple pulls to get it primed. And let's get our choke. Choke. A couple pulls just to get fuel down through the line and into the carburetor. That's the ideal, anyway. Fuel is on, switch is on, <laughs> okay, so we're at least no worse off than we were before, at least she's smoking hard, I'm going to let it run here, sounds like it's struggling, let it run for a minute, now this engine hasn't run in well over a year, at least not, not good, so I am smoking real hard, let it run with it. Let me see. There you go. There you go. Well, the generator takes a while. You hear it revving like that? It takes a while for it to stabilize. So, fire it up, off choke. Don't let it run. Don't let it warm up. And I'm gonna see if I can find a tool to plug in. I got my last hand sander here. Plug this baby into any one of your receptacles. There you go. You got power. So, back up a little bit. Maybe y'all can hear a little better. Anyway, long story short, um, the thing sat for a year, carburetor gummed up. Tried to start it, wouldn't work. Sat for another year. Tried to clean the carburetor, didn't work. Bought a new carburetor for a whopping 29 bucks. And in about 10 minutes, take the old one off, put the new one on, and we're back in business. And now, to save myself in the future, the carburetor getting gummed up, what I've done is I've actually just turned the fuel off. And now I'm just waiting for it to uh, run the fuel tank out. So I'm going to stand here and wait and see. Well, not the fuel tank, I'm sorry. I'm waiting for it to run the carburetor out. And there it goes. That took actually over a minute for it to run itself out of fuel, but uh, I'll edit that out for y'all.